Step 3. Requesting and Granting Elements In this step, we will become familiar with more advanced teamwork messaging options, including element requests, as well as assigning or granting elements to other team members. We will also see how these smart messages can help your everyday design work by automatically focusing on the element in question. In this step, the design team will be creating and modifying slab edges and working on the galleries and suspended ceilings of the office building. Switch to the ARCHICAD instance of Mary Jones. Click the Reset Orientation button to reset the orientation of the floor plan view. Double click to activate the 4.3.1 Requesting Slabs preset view in the Chapter 4 folder of the Navigator view map. The 3D window will open. The 3D window also shows reservations by other team members. You can see that the slab above the second floor is currently reserved by Joe Smith. Switch to the All with Original Color option in the Colored Workspaces field of the Teamwork dialog. Click to activate the Slab tool in the Toolbox. Select the Edit, Select All Slabs, to select all the slabs in the project. Click the Reserve button on the Teamwork palette to reserve the selected slabs. The Last Reservation Results dialog appears. Here you can see that the BIM server could not reserve all requested elements. The Reserved column displays the number of successfully reserved elements. The Conflict with Others column displays the number of elements that could not be reserved because they are already reserved by someone else. As you can see, there was one element that could not be reserved due to conflict. Highlight the 3D region row. Notice the Show Conflict and Request buttons are enabled when conflicting elements are found. Click the Show Conflict button. This will take you to the 3D view of the whole model, where the conflicting element has been selected for you. This is the element we could not reserve because it is already reserved by Joe Smith. Click the Request button in the Last Reservation Results dialog. The Ownership Request dialog is displayed. Here we can write an instant message to the owner of the element or elements. Notice that ARCHICAD automatically fills out the To field and inserts a default message text which you can freely change if you wish. You can also set the message priority as we discussed earlier. Click the Request button to send the request message to Joe Smith. It is important to know that ARCHICAD automatically associates such request messages with the requested element or elements, so the other team member can easily view the requested elements on the floor plan or in 3D and even release these with a simple click. Click Close to leave this dialog. Switch to the ARCHICAD instance of Joe Smith. Switch to the To Do category and double click to open the message that has just been received to view its content. The Ownership Request dialog opens. Here you can not only read the message, but also perform various follow-up actions with just the click of a mouse. Let's review the possibilities. Click the Show button in this dialog to display the requested element. The 3D view opens with the requested slab automatically selected. Now we can easily make a decision whether to grant or deny the requested element or close the dialog if we want to handle this request later. Click the Grant button. 
the element is granted to Mary Jones. The hot spots of the slab immediately show that it no longer belongs to Joe Smith. A grant message is also sent to Mary Jones automatically. Once we grant or deny an ownership request, its message will be automatically moved to the completed folder. Switch to the ARCHICAD instance of Mary Jones. Check the To Do category of the Messages panel of the Teamwork palette. The new message shows that Joe Smith granted the requested slab. It is also visible that the selection hotspots of the selected slab have changed. It's already in Mary's workspace. Double click the received message to open it. The Ownership Request dialog displays a status report on the request operation. The answer field shows whether the element was granted or denied by the other user. Click the Move to Completed button to move this message to the completed folder. Now the slab belongs to Mary Jones and she can continue her work. Let's proceed and create some suspended ceilings. Double-click to activate the 4.3.1 Requesting Slabs preset view in the Chapter 4 folder of the Navigator view map. Use the Escape key to deselect any selected elements. Click the slab above the ground floor to select it. Click to activate the slab tool in the toolbox and click the slab edge located near its top surface below the railing. Select the Edge Settings command from the appearing pet palette. At the Slab Edge dialog, you can set custom angles for the edge of the slab. In the Edge Angle field, select the Custom Angle option. Enter 105 degrees for its value. Click OK to accept these changes. Set the same slab edges of the two other slabs above the first floor and the second floor. Double-click to activate the 4.3.2 Ceiling End Profile preset view in the Chapter 4 folder of the Navigator view map. Here we can see the section of the slab. The slab edge is now slanted. This is also a fill showing the planned profile of the ceiling edge which will cover this edge of the slab. Now we will assign this element to Joe Smith in the name of Mary Jones. We will also send him a message asking him to create these ceiling elements. In addition, we will send him instructions on how to create the necessary 60 by 60 centimeter ceiling grid. We can only assign our own reserved elements to other team members, so right click the fill and select the reserve selected elements command from the context menu to reserve it. With the fills still selected, right-click and select the Assign Selected Elements to menu item and select Joe Smith from the list. The Assignment Message dialog opens. Select the default message and delete it. Then type, Joe, please create beam profile from this fill and then use these profiled beams to provide a closing structure for the edges of the suspended ceiling. Also, please create a 60 by 60 centimeter ceiling grid in all offices and passages in the project. Finally, click the Assign button to send the message to Joe.
let's switch to the ARCHICAD instance of Joe Smith. Switch to the to-do list of the messages panel of the teamwork palette. Position the mouse over the new message and read the message text and the appearing info tag. Right-click the message. Select the Show Elements option from the context menu. ARCHICAD will open the section view and also select the fill which was assigned to Joe by Mary. Select the Edit Copy menu command to copy the fill to the clipboard. Then activate the Design Complex Profiles Profile Manager to open the Profile Manager dialog. Click the Edit Chosen Profile button to activate the Profile Editor window. Select the Edit Paste menu command to paste the previously copied fills. In the Paste Options dialog, select the center of the current view, as well as keep the current view radio buttons. And finally click Paste to proceed. Drag the pasted fill so that the upper right node of the fill is positioned at the origin of the profile editor window. Finally, click elsewhere to complete the paste operation. Click the Store Profile button. Enter Slab Edge Profile for the name of the new profile. Then click OK to store it. Close the Profile Editor window. Close the Profile Manager palette. Double click to activate the 4.3.3 Profiled Ceiling Edges preset view in the Chapter 4 folder of the Navigator view map. Click to activate the Wall tool in the toolbox. Click the Wall Setting button in the Info box to open the Wall Default Settings dialog. Click the Favorites button to open the Apply Favorites dialog. Select the Slab Edge Profile Favorite from the list and click OK to load its settings. Click OK to proceed. Activate the Gravity Toggle and the Gravitate to Slab feature on the standard toolbar. Click elsewhere to deselect the slab. We will use the two endpoints of the slanted slab edges to apply the previously created profiles for the closing edge of the suspended ceilings. With the gravity feature activated, click the left end of the slanted slab edge above the second floor to define the start point of the ceiling closing profile. Then, move to the other end of the slanted slab edge, keep the shift key pressed to make sure it will be at a 90 degree angle, and click the right endpoint of the slanted slab edge. The tracker palette should display 7740 millimeters for the distance and 90 degrees for the angle. We have placed the ceiling edge profile at the first slab edge. With the help of the gravity feature, place two additional ceiling closing profiles at the other two slab edges above the ground floor as well as the first floor. We need to modify the home stories of the two upper ceiling closing profiles since their home story is set to ground floor at the moment. This means that these profiles are visible on the ground floor only. Select the uppermost of the three profiles. Look for the Home Story field in the Info box. You can use your mouse's scroll wheel to find this field, or you can also resize the Info box so its settings are positioned in two rows. Click the Home Story field and choose the Select Story option from the list. 
At the Select Story dialog, choose the second story for the home story of the profile and click OK to proceed. Finally, select the middle one of the three profiles. Set the home story of this profile to first floor. Now we will create the suspended ceiling structure with the help of ARCHICAD's advanced curtain wall tool. Double click to activate the 4.3.4 Ceiling 1 preset view located in the Chapter 4 folder of the Navigator view map. Click to activate the Curtain Wall tool in the toolbox. Click the Curtain Wall Settings icon at the Info box to open its Settings dialog. Click the Curtain Wall Favorites button. Select the Ceiling 1 favorite from the list and click Apply to load its settings. Click OK to proceed. Select the Boundary Geometry method in the Info box. Hold down the Space key and click near label 1.1 to place the suspended ceiling structure on the floor plan. When the cursor shape changes to Sun, click inside the Found Boundary to define the orientation of the ceiling. ARCHICAD will find the boundaries, defined by surrounding walls and slab edges, and generate the ceiling structure considering these boundaries. The applied curtain wall favorite refers to a 60 cm by 60 cm suspended ceiling grid. As you can see, ARCHICAD's curtain wall tool can be perfectly applied to represent not only curtain walls, but also suspended ceilings, which also consist of a grid-like structure. With the Curtain Wall tool still active, shift-click the previously placed suspended ceiling to select it. In the Info box, modify its base height to 2825 mm. The base height is indicated with the letter B. The height of the suspended ceiling is now adjusted to its correct height. Notice that its floor plan representation is now displayed by dashed lines. We will not create all the suspended ceiling grids now. The grids have already been created in this training project file to save time. Let's see what the completed ceiling grid looks like. Double-click to activate the 4.3.5 Ceilings Done preset view in the Chapter 4 folder of the Navigator view map. In this view, all ceilings have already been completed on the floor plan. Activate the 4.3.6 Ceilings in Section preset view now to display the ceilings in a section view. The live section view is automatically updated as the project changes. As you can see, all suspended ceilings are placed correctly.